My name is Shannon Sarna. I'm editor of The Nosher. If we haven't met or we haven't done this before, you've never seen me. The Nosher is part of 70 Faces Media. We're a small Jewish media company. Our, my sister sites include Stellar, Alma, My Jewish Learning, JT News. So if you don't follow some of the other brands, now's a great time to start following us. We have so many different offerings. Tonight's class is part of the hub, which launched this past year. There's lots of other learning opportunities, classes, travel, travel experiences, Shabbat experiences, all offered on the hub. So check it out. Um, you know, it's a very hard time to, of course, not be able to gather with our friends and family and communities the way that we want, but I'm grateful that technology allows us to gather virtually in this space. So before we jump into black and white cookies, which I'm so excited about, I love them very, very much. I just wanted to set some ground rules. You'll see that the chat is open. The chat's gonna be open the whole time. My super talented, brilliant colleague, Becky Phillips, is gonna be manning the chat. So I will try to answer as many questions as possible. I will stop periodically to answer questions. Probably we're gonna get some of the same repeat questions about the process, the recipe, so um, we'll try to answer those as they come in and as they're grouped together. I'll repeat anything that needs to be repeated. I ask two things. Please be kind and respectful in the chat. Be kind and respectful to one another. Be kind and respectful to me, or we will just kick you out of this Zoom. Um, just be nice. That's, that's, that's a pretty good rule, right? All right. Um, so, black and white cookies. Does anybody know? the origin of black and white cookies. You can put it in the chat. Where were they invented? Where did they come from? Are they from the old country? I'm kind of following the chat to see what anybody says. New York City is, yes, New York City is a good guess. Um, or are you saying that, you, that that's where they came from? New, uh, on the south side, not on the south side. So, um, Black and white cookies have a very unique origin story because there's a little bit of a debate between which bakery and where exactly black and white cookies come from. So Glazer's Bakery on the Upper East Side in New York City is considered Seinfeld. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we'll get to Seinfeld. Um, Glazer's Bakery on the Upper East Side is, is considered where the black and white cookie was first invented, was first showcased. And um, there's another story, which is that a bakery in Utica called Hemstrat, which I'm not sure if I'm saying it correctly, so please forgive me, um, also created the black and white cookie. Like a lot of American foods in general and Jewish American foods, there's sort of the same story, which is that a food came over from Europe, landed in America, and kind of took on a life of its own. And the black and white cookie is considered derived from a Dutch cookie, from a German cookie, and entered a new phase when it came to America. And actually is considered to have almost colonial era origin. But the debate is really between Glazers and Hemstruck. And the, the difference between these two cookies is actually both significant and subtle. The black and white cookie of Glazers was a platter cookie and it used a different kind of frosting. The one from Utica was more domed, rounder, and it had more of a traditional, thicker frosting. So in truth, what we will be making tonight is a little bit closer to the half moon cookie, because it is gonna be domed, and it's gonna have a more traditional frosting on top, which is a good thing, because it's way more delicious. I don't know if you've noticed, but some black and white cookies can be a little dry, a little crumbly, and the frosting is a little lackluster. So I hope you guys agree that this frosting is really flavorful and delicious. My eight-year-old, who is my harshest critic, she loves it. So I hope that that speaks well to it. It's not really a cookie, though. It's really more of a cake. And so I might liken it to like an American pedophore because you're taking a cake and you're frosting it in a very particular way, the same way that you would a pedophore. So it would be irresponsible of me to talk about black and white cookies without at least mentioning Seinfeld. I saw somebody before that said that Seinfeld was the originator of the black and white cookie, which of course it's not. But there is a very famous episode of Seinfeld where Jerry says, Elaine, look to the cookie. And there's a very particular way that you eat the cookie to get both the chocolate and vanilla all in one bite, that it would lead to harmony if only it were that simple. 
which of course it's not. So I'm just gonna pause for one second and see if there's lots of questions already coming in. And if so, I'm happy to answer them. And if not, we'll get started making our cookie batter, which is actually more of a cake batter. Becky, do I have a lot of questions so far? Um, I have a, there are a couple of people with their hand raised and it's, it's gonna be hard for us to call on people. If you could put your questions in the chat, if that's why you raised your hands, that would be great. Um, a few people are asking about recording. We are going to email everybody the link to the recording. Don't worry. Um, and that's all I've seen so far. Okay, great. So I will talk you guys through the recipe as we go. We're also going to need kind of a lot of stuff tonight. So let me, before we really get going with the recipe, let me just shout out some stuff that you need. Number one, if you're baking along in real time, preheat your oven now to 350 degrees. Number two, you're going to need a lot of bowls. We need a bowl for dry ingredients, a bowl for wet ingredients. You need a small bowl for some water. This is gonna help us smooth out our cake cookies as we form them. And then you're gonna need two more bowls. I know it's a lot of bowls, I'm sorry. I hope everybody has a dishwasher or a really good partner or child that's gonna wash everything for them. You need two more bowls for the icing, one for the vanilla icing, one for the chocolate icing. Some spatulas, with. And if you have one, a cookie scoop, very important. If you don't have a cookie scoop, don't worry. You can use a quarter cup measuring cup um, and that can serve as your portion as well. I'm making kind of smaller size um, uh, black and white cookies tonight. You can certainly make them a little bit larger if you prefer. The last thing that you're gonna need um, besides some measuring tools is if you have something with a flat edge, like um, even a piece of parchment a ruler, we're gonna use this to create that nice um, line right down the middle. Okay, so you're starting with, I'm gonna start shouting out ingredients if you don't have the recipe in front of you. In your bowl with dry ingredients, whenever you're making cake or cookies, usually you're gonna separate out your dry ingredients and your wet ingredients. You're gonna mix them up and then add them together. This way they incorporate a little bit better. One and a quarter cup unbleached all-purpose flour, a half a teaspoon of baking soda, a pinch of baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt. Okay, that's all going in our dry ingredients. And I'm gonna just whisk this up very gently. And don't worry, if you can't see what I'm doing, we have another camera set up and I'll show you anything that is a little bit complicated right up close and we'll, and we'll, um, we'll, we'll focus in on it. In my other bowl, I have, oof, um, I have a half a cup of, um, white granulated sugar and a third a cup of butter. If you're not sure what a third a cup of butter is, it's five and a third tablespoons, but if you look at your stick of butter, it'll have a demarcation on it where it says a quarter cup and a third cup. So just cut it right at that third cup. And room temperature, really important. You want your butter softened. If it's not softened already, you can stick it in the microwave at like five to 10 second increments and soften it up. So I have this already nice and mixed. Yes, parv margarine works fine. I know we already had a question about how to make this parv. Super easy. Parv margarine and whatever is your non-dairy milk of choice. Personally, I love oat milk or vanilla almond milk. Um, those would be the two that I would vote for. I hear cashew milk is also great, but I'm just really allergic to cashew milk, so I don't use it for baking. So then I wouldn't get to eat it. And what's the point of that? All right, so to my, um, to my butter and sugar mixture over here, I am gonna add one large egg and I have a third a cup of buttermilk already poured out. If you don't have buttermilk, you can use regular milk with a little bit of acid, either a squeeze of lemon juice or a little bit of just plain white vinegar and that will create that sourness and the curdle sensation that buttermilk has. It has like a little bit of a sour taste to it. I find that um, anytime that I'm making a cake that has sour cream or buttermilk, it creates a really tender cake and I just love it. So I definitely recommend trying buttermilk if you can. Um, it's fine if you're using a uh, par. Okay, so adding my egg and then we're gonna mix this really well. And then we're gonna alternate between our wet and dry ingredients. Any questions? If you have a hand mixer, it's definitely better to do this with a hand mixer, but it would be very loud and I didn't wanna do that to you guys quite an annoying sound. Yeah, and somebody asked, um, do you use kosher salt or table salt? Which which one is preferred? I would either say to use um, kosher salt or I actually like using um, fine sea salt when I'm baking. Um, I like the Trader Joe's uh, fine sea salt. 
that that's my favorite, but kosher, kosher salt is just fine as well. Great, great question. I didn't see the names pop up, but if my lovely ladies, Dana and Bonnie and Sarah are on, thank you guys. I'm very excited that you'll be on here tonight. Okay, so do you use almond milk? Yes, you can. Hi, Dana. Yes, you are here. I'm so glad you guys are here. Uh, Dana, after this is over, is a skincare expert, and she will be giving everybody tips on what products they should be using. We're going to talk about my fine lines. It's all part of the class. Okay, so now I'm going to alternate my buttermilk and my flour. I forgot my vanilla. How much vanilla? Anybody? Shout it out. Shout it out. Uh, half a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm very much of the school of Pioneer Woman, how she measures vanilla. She just kind of pours it in all, all the time. She obviously has a very high vanilla budget. A little bit expensive these days. Okay, my vanilla is all mixed into my wet ingredients. And now I'm gonna alternate my buttermilk and my dry mixtures. This is going to be a bit of a thick batter. It's not, uh, it's not gonna be like a cake batter. It really is like a drop cookie or a drop cake. It's quite thick. So I don't want anybody to be concerned or alarmed. That's a great tip. Costco vanilla is a good deal. I mean, if that's not a Jewish shopping tip, I don't know what is. I don't like going to Costco. It's very overwhelming, but I do like a lot of Costco products, I will say. And it's a great place to buy yeast because you can buy it in bulk and it's, um, it's very uh, reasonably priced. When the pandemic started, I had two bags of yeast in my stockpile. So I was able to share my yeast with my friends. I even sent some in the mail to my dad, like a crazy person. I see some questions maybe. Becky, are there more questions I can help answer? Yeah, one is, can you give everybody a look at the batter um, with the camera and I can spotlight that? Okay, so you can see it's quite thick. I'm almost done. That's the rest of the flour. You can absolutely do this with a hand mixer or a sand mixer. On the other hand, I'm getting in a great workout right now, which means I can eat my cookies later and just feel such happiness. Okay, there we go. That batter is all ready. You can see it's very thick. It's standing up. It's not, uh, it's not loose. All right, so next up, I have a baking sheet with parchment paper on it. You can use a still pad also, but you definitely wanna line it with something. And I have my cookie scoop. I love these, these flatter spatulas because I can scrape off all the the bit of dough on my spoon, and I can scrape the sides of the bowl and make sure I'm getting all of that. That's a little tip that my friend Danielle, who is a trained pastry chef, always told me this way. You never know how much you're wasting if you don't really try to scrape it all, scrape it all down. And we want to get as many cookies as possible in here, right? Ice cream scoop works for you. What a great tip. That's a great tip. So here is where precision is going to start to matter a little bit. Now, Here's what I'm gonna say about this. I'm gonna talk out of both sides of my mouth. These cookies are gonna be delicious even if they are imperfectly shaped. They are perfectly imperfect. If you're trying to get them as perfect as possible, here's where you really wanna scoop them. And I'll, I'm gonna scooch my tray over so you can see what my hands are doing. Where you really wanna get an even scoop and you really want it to be as round as possible. Becky, do you wanna just highlight um, my scoop over here? So I'll scoop it one more time. They are gonna spread. So you wanna have a little space in between. I'm gonna then take my water, cold water with my finger, and I'm gonna smooth this and just flatten it a little bit. But the, the more perfect my mounds are, when I put them on my baking tray and smooth them down, the more perfect they will bake up. And then the more perfect they will look. Shannon, a few people are still mixing their ingredients. So um, 
they, they're asking for a little a little more time. Okay, no wor no worries. We're gonna we're gonna take time and also don't worry because this is gonna be recorded. You can always go back and watch. I cheated. I had all of my ingredients uh, measured out. So while you guys are finishing mixing, I will continue to scoop. And if there's more questions, I'm happy to answer questions as they come. So, you know, it has been said that, not by me, but by somebody else, that black and white cookies are one of the most iconic New York foods. I would sort of call them a New York-ish food. They are really um, part of the New York Jewish experience. You can't go to a bris, a bar mitzvah, um, a Shabbat Kiddush, uh, a Shiva, any life cycle event in the Jewish community without having black and white served. And we had them at our engagement party and they were like pink and blue. We had them at all of our kids' baby namings and brises. They, they really are such like a special part of the community. Um, and even though they're not technically like a Jewish cookie, kind of like a rainbow cookie. So I kind of just love that something that was part of New York became part and parcel with sort of Jewish, Jewish food. Um, hold on a second. All right, any, any questions as I am continuing to scoop and smooth? And somebody asked, what is the purpose of the water? So the water is, is just, I'm just using my finger to smooth out the dough and make it a little bit more perfectly round. If you forget to do this, you don't want to do it, don't worry. It's, it's not going to make such a big difference. This is in the hope that they will be as perfectly round as possible. Because um, then when you ice them, the more round they are, first of all, the easier it will be for you to ice them straight down the middle. Um, Can you show everybody the scoop? I'm going to... Uh highlight your uh, tray again and can you show everybody the size of the scoop so i'm using a what is like a a, a normal sort of size um ice cream uh cookie scoop that's just, that's my hands that's the, that that's the scoop you can certainly use bigger than this these are these are smaller cookies i like to make mine smaller you can make yours as big as you prefer you're just going to want to make sure when you bake them that if they're much bigger than this, that we maybe allow for a little bit more, more time. I was very, very intimidated to make these before the first time I tried it. I thought I was so nervous. They're so nostalgic and so special in my own family. I was really worried and I just, I couldn't conceive of how they were made. And then after the first time I made them, I realized that they were, they were actually much easier than I thought. So right now they're sort of domed on top like a cookie. And when, after they're baked, we're gonna flip them over. And that's the part that we're going to ice is the flat part right on top. I'm just gonna get another piece of parchment, finish scooping and I'm get, gonna get these in the oven. It's okay if you're still working. And then we're gonna start to make our icing and we'll continue to answer any questions that you guys may have. Yep. A few more questions, Shannon. Um, how many cookies does this recipe make? Oh, I have to think about it. How many does the recipe say? I forgot. Two, four, six, eight. Um, I'd say this makes about um, about a dozen. Um, and it's definitely the kind of recipe you can very easily double or triple if you want to make a bigger batch. And uh, will the cookies spread a lot on the sheet while they're baking? They will spread a little bit. They're not gonna they're not gonna like whoosh monster out, but they will spread a little bit, so you're gonna wanna have have a little bit of space in between each one. I have about um, I would say, oh I'm so terrible at measuring. Where's my ruler? Uh, what is that? I don't know. An inch and a half, two inches between each cookie. So I'm getting down to like the last bits in my in my bowl, but I still wanna try and get my my rounds as even as possible. I'm using my spatula to help me do that, but I don't want to waste any of the batter. So if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm just going to scrape down the rest of this and scoop it into my cookie scoop. Okay, see, I'm scraping it off just like that. I'm going to smooth the Somebody rest of it. Somebody wanted to know, can, uh, can you make this with a chocolate base? 
Oh, interesting question. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you. I'm sure you could. What you would probably want to add cocoa powder to the um, to the flour mixture and reduce a little bit of the flour to compensate. I'm gonna stick these in the oven now. Um, and test it out. I it would be very interesting. Something else that a lot of bakeries will do at various holiday times, or like I mentioned before, at certain um, life cycle events is uh, dye the uh, frosting different colors. So you could do, I've seen like black and orange at Halloween time, you know, like chocolate and orange dyed frosting. Um, I've seen red and green, I've seen blue and white, I've seen white and pink. So, you know, if you wanted to have some fun with these, um, changing the color up is also another way that you can do that. And Shannon, can you uh, scooch the pan a little bit more under the um, camera so people can see what you're doing? I'm just finishing smoothing the rest, this, my second tray of them out. You can see I kind of plopped them on here. So you can space yours out nicer than I did. Just ignore me. Okay. Yes, if you're just joining us, um, I see some questions that this is being recorded, so you can go back and watch it. Um, but we also, on The Nosher, if you go to thenosher.com, and maybe Becky can share the link also in the chat, we have a video with how to make these, so you can watch it. And if you go to our Instagram account, which is Jewish Food on Instagram, you can see um, a reel which shows the steps as well. So there's lots of ways to watch this if you're worried about the steps. If this is your first time making these, like I said, I was so nervous the first time I made them. Don't worry, it's gonna be great. And if it's not great, then you'll try again. It's no big deal, you know, it's just cookies. Or in this case, cake cookies. All right, so I have my last batch and I'm gonna pop them into the oven. All right. I'm just smoothing, smoothing them out. It's like a little baby tushy. All right, into the oven. All right, I'm gonna pause for a second. We're gonna start to make our icing, but I wanna give everybody the opportunity if there's more lingering questions to ask any questions. I think somebody asked again how many cookies it makes. The size that I'm making is about a dozen. Um, depending on how big you're making them, could make a little more, a little less, and the recipe can easily be doubled. I'm gonna move some stuff out of the way. Any other questions? Somebody, somebody had a question about the butter. Do you want to cream the butter or just beat it until combined? Um, you you're gonna want to you're gonna want to beat it until com it's combined you don't have to beat the butter then add the sugar just make sure that it's smooth and everything is combined together but I do the butter and the sugar first and then I add the egg and then I alternate between the dry ingredients and the wet ingredients can they be frozen after iced I would not freeze them after they're iced if you want to freeze them I would freeze them after they're baked and they're completely cooled and then you can ice them later. That's what I would do. Maybe somebody else has experience freezing something like this, um, but that's um, that that would be that would be my suggestion. You just don't know how the icing is going to come out. And um, um, but because they're kind of cake cookies, I think that they're actually freeze very well. I never understand people are asking to freeze things. I'm just going to eat them. They're going to be gone in the next two days. But I respect your willpower to freeze the cookies. Speaking of New York cookies, if you like Levain Bakery cookies, those are big monster chunky cookies. Whole Foods is now selling them in the freezer section. And then you can just like make one cookie at a time, which I think is great. Cause sometimes don't you get a craving for a cookie and you're like, oh, I don't wanna make like a whole batch of cookies. But you can take one cookie out and in five minutes it's done. Okay, other questions while we are paused. Is it okay to leave out the lemon zest? Absolutely, leave out the lemon zest. Absolutely. I left it out the other day. I only did vanilla. Totally. I only have one cup of confectioner sugar. I, you're, you're, you're not going to be able to ice all your cookies, but that's fine. Ice half of them, freeze them, and then ice them another time and you'll have black and white cookies another time. Totally fine. Um, all right. So for the frosting, 
Now, here's the time where I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions and I'm gonna get a lot of, sl a lot of slack about this, but when you make this kind of frosting, you're kind of gonna like add a little bit here and there. This is the same way if like when you see those hard sugar cookies that are frosted, it's a similar frosting. So sometimes you need a little bit more milk, sometimes you need a little bit more icing sugar. It's kind of about the texture. You, you're gonna see, and then you're gonna ask me a lot of questions and I'm gonna annoy you, but it's gonna be fine. We're gonna get there. So two cups of confectioner sugar, a tablespoon of light corn syrup, a little bit of vanilla, and then milk. How much milk? We're gonna see. The recipe says two to three tablespoons. I made it the other day. It was a little bit more. Um, and then we're gonna separate them out. Once we make the base frosting, we're gonna separate them out and then make the chocolate frosting. When I ice the cookies, I start with the vanilla and then I do the chocolate so that the vanilla is gonna harden a little bit and then we're gonna add the chocolate on top of it. I have, this is a tablespoon measuring for the, um, for the corn syrup and I'm actually going to spray it with cooking spray. And the reason that I do this is because then it doesn't stick on top. Um, but actually I'm gonna do my milk first. So in my bowl is my two cups of confectioner sugar and I also added a pinch of salt, which I'm not sure is in the recipe, but I think it makes a nice difference. Whenever you're baking something sweet, you add a little bit of salt, it really brings out the sweetness. Uh, please go under the other camera. Is, is it easier? You want to see this? Is that more interesting? Is that better? Okay. All right. So I'm going to start by adding one, two, and three of milk. This is just, this is not even full fat milk. This is reduced fat milk. That's what I put in my coffee in the morning. And now I'm going to spray my tablespoon with a little bit of cooking spray so that my corn syrup doesn't stick. Um, I'm seeing some comments about what they're seeing. Tell me what you want to be seeing and I will try to make that happen for you. Is it okay? All right, so that was the corn syrup. And then I'm going to add my vanilla. And I'm, I'm a pioneer woman measuring that out. She's always like a little bit of vanilla and then she like pours half the bottle in. All right, just grabbing another spoon and I'm gonna to start to mix this up. And it's gonna seem very sticky and thick at first. We're gonna keep going. I'm gonna see if it needs to add, we need to add more milk. All right, okay, it's pretty sticky. So I'm gonna add a little bit more milk until it is kind of smooth and spreadable. All right. The trick here with this kind of frosting is that it has to be somewhere in between. Very quickly, see now it's getting much more liquidy. You want to be able to spread it, but you don't want it to be too thin either because if it's too thin, it will run right off of the cookie. Hold on, I have a little something in here. The only people who are eating these cookies are me and my family. So please no comments about my fingers in the bowl. I promise you, my disgusting children do not care if I stuck my finger in the frosting. Okay. So I want this to be really nice and smooth. I don't want any lumps in here. I'm gonna scooch this over for one second so I can really get some elbow grease, as they say. Uh, Becky, any ongoing questions? Um, yeah, a few questions. Um, one person's concerned about making it too thin and how to make it thicker if it's too thin. So, great question. Okay. Um, if, it, if you think that it gets too thin, you can always add a little bit more confectioner sugar. It's no problem. It happens all the time when you're doing these kinds of, of cookies. So I'll show you here what this is looking like. And I'm going to take half of this and I'm going to add it to my cocoa powder. So I'm gonna have my vanilla frosting. I'm gonna have my chocolate frosting. Um, other questions? How much powdered sugar for the white versus the chocolate? So I'm making one batch. So I'm starting with the two cups of confectioner sugar and this is my base frosting. And now I'm gonna add 
about half of this right into my bowl with my chocolate. I know it probably doesn't seem like this is a lot of frosting, but you actually don't end up using that much on each cookie. It's a little deceiving. And then we're gonna mix this up and see how the consistency is in bowl. So you're not, it's not two separate frostings. You're kind of making one base and then adding the cocoa powder to it. All right. Can you repeat how much cocoa powder, Shannon? Yes, it is, and I can see it's a little bit thick. So it's it's a it's a quarter cup of cocoa powder. But I and then I'm gonna add a little bit more milk to this one because it's it's thick. So I'm adding what's about a tablespoon to my cocoa powder. Okay, all right. Some people are using substitutes for corn syrup. Can you recommend some substitutes? And also, if you know, if then they're the same uh, measurements. So I, I, am, I am actually not sure about the corn syrup because I do like using corn syrup in this. And the reason why is the corn syrup helps it set and then um, it helps it harden it afterwards. So maybe you guys could tell me what substitutes you're using for corn syrup. I assume it's because somebody has an allergy. What are some what are some corn syrup, maple syrup, or honey? Um, I got, okay. So the thing is, is that the reason that we're using corn syrup, it's not just because we're using a syrup for funsies. Uh, we're using it because corn syrup will help it set. It's going to keep it from running all over the place, and it's going to make it really shiny and hard on top. So if you don't have corn syrup, um, you can actually just leave it out. You don't have to substitute it with honey or something else. I hope that helped answer. Other questions? All right, let's see how we're doing on time. So I can see my chocolate icing is a little bit thicker than I want it to be. So I'm gonna add a little bit more milk. See, I want it to run a little bit. I don't want it to be super, super, super thick. how they're doing. So they need one more minute. I want them to be a little bit hard and golden brown on top when they are done. So if they seem too soft, add them back in. I just moved and so I'm still playing around with my oven. Every oven is different. So you have to always measure your oven and make sure that the temperature is accurate. This oven runs a little bit hot. So I'm still, we're still learning each other. Still, we're still getting to know each other. Okay, so this is much better now. And almost ready to go. This is a very rich um, chocolate frosting. All right, see, now it's the right consistency. I just wanna make sure there's no lumps in there. Fantastic. This is the cocoa powder that I prefer to use the Hershey's Special Dark Cocoa Powder. I like this for a couple of reasons. It's a really nice flavor. For parv desserts, especially for non-dairy desserts, I think that um, it makes just really great cakes and cookies. I love it. It's a little bit richer than um, your normal uh, cocoa powder. I, see, I feel like I have a couple more questions about the frosting, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk through the process one more time. I know this is a little bit confusing, and I'm sorry. So first of all, Here's the consistency. Here's the consistency of the vanilla one. You can see it's both thick and runny. You want it to be spreadable, but not super watery. You know, that's kind of, here, I'll stick these underneath the, um, the phone so you can see them. And I'm gonna take the cookies out. All right, that one's gonna have one more minute. So I can hopefully show you these cookies. They're a little bit golden brown. They're perfectly flat on the bottom and they're a little bit domed on top. I'm gonna get my wire rack out so we can start to pull these down. I always love to talk about Great British Breaking Show when I teach a class. 
Any any fans of Great British Baking Show or Great British Bake Off? We they haven't had a, a black and white cookie challenge yet, but they had a babka challenge. They had a challah plating braiding several times. Um, and um, what was the other one? Babka bagels, challah, and um, it was very controversial this season. Um, yes. Oh, the rainbow bagels. Right, 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 right. I forgot. The babka, I think, was the one that upset me the most. Um, bagels, like there was no way they were going to be able to make bagels in like two hours. It would take a really long time to make properly. Um, yeah, they did insult the babka. I know. I know. I was very upset. Um, but also secretly hoping that they're going to do more like Jewish baking in the future like what would they what would they do i feel like they're they went like really deep into some asian stuff maybe they could do some like yemenite breads or some complicated um sparty desserts all right so i have my my second batch here all right great i'm so glad so they're round i have to say i made them last week they were not this round i'm so happy all right these are cool off. I can help answer any questions, but we let these cool a little bit. You don't want to start icing them while they are um, while they are too hot because the frosting will run right off. So someone asked, how do you keep the icing from hardening while you're waiting for the cookies to cool? It is going to harden a little bit. Don't worry about it. You'll just beat it again right before you go. It's okay. Don't worry. It happened to me the other day. It'll get a little crusty. Just tra -tra 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 -tra. Um, and I'll be I'll be fine when we're ready to go. Okay, I'm gonna start to clean up a little bit, which is my favorite thing to do. Is I hate a mess and I hate a messy kitchen, and I have stuff all over the place. Um, so while I'm cleaning up, if you have other baking questions, and let these cookies cool for a minute, then we'll start icing them. Make sure if you're gonna ice them along that we have a, some kind of flat edge. This is um called like a dough scraper. You can use it for, or um, like a cake, you know, thingy where you decorate the cake. Um, so it doesn't have to be this, it could be a ruler, it could just be a sheet of parchment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the cookie when we're ready to ice it, and I use this tool to create a flat edge. And I'm gonna take my frosting and put it right here. And then my trick is that I just gently push it up this way so that I'm not spreading the frosting around the rest of the cookie. It takes a little bit of practice, um, and don't worry if, you're, if your edges aren't perfectly straight because when they set, it won't matter and they'll be delicious. How long do you wait before, I can't see that whole comment. Um, before moving the cookies to the cooling rack. Um, I move them right away. I move them right away. Um, thank you. I'm glad. Yes, my my pans are disgustingly dirty. They're not dirty actually. They're just used. They're loved. They're very loved, and they work fine. I'm not I'm not getting beat them. Um, okay. Other questions. So I X not the chocolate. You can't see the cookies. They're cooling, Ron. All right. I'm just joking. I mean, they are cooling. See, here we go. We have the cookies. So. If the batter seems loose, add more flour. Um, yes, it might have been that you didn't have enough flour. I don't want to tell you. Um, I don't want to tell you how much, but the, the 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 batter should be thick. It is like a it is like a thick cake batter, like a coffee cake batter. They should be a little bit domed on top, and they should have a nice golden color on the bottom. We're gonna do the vanilla frosting first. We're gonna do the vanilla frosting first. That's my suggestion. You can do whatever you want. Um, I have not done various flavored act extracts. I'm kind of like a traditionalist because I think, because I grew up with them, they have a very particular taste for me. There's some Jewish foods that I didn't grow up with as sort of part of the everyday experience or the weekly experience. Um, but black and white cookies were something that was very much a part of our lives. So I'm a little bit of a traditionalist, but you could definitely experiment with, with flavored extracts and see how you like that. You know, especially like if you love almonds, you could do almonds, you know, they have all kinds of flavors. You could do rose, you could do orange. It would be very interesting to try and see if you like it. Plus, what else are you doing? You're home, just bake, see how it goes. Um, any tip to make mocha flavored frosting? Oh, I love that idea. I'm gonna have to try that. I saw somebody make a matcha one. 
So instead of the milk, when you make the frosting, I would add some coffee. Just have some brewed coffee and instead of your milk, add that to your, to your chocolate milk is what I would do. Um, oh, I mean, like, that's not even a question, Joe. What kind of question is that? I always put butter. If you're, if the choice is between, would you like butter or like hydrogenated oil in a tub? What would you choose? I would choose butter. Butter is always the right choice. All right. These are actually getting pretty cool quickly. So we can start to, um, to ice them. And I'll continue to answer any questions. Um, Lizzie asked, my dough was sticky. Is it supposed to be? It, I don't know if sticky would be the adjective I would use. But if you think that your dough is a little bit on the thicker side, it should be. I have a little bit of dough here left in my bowl, even though I told you guys to make sure that you use it all. It, it, this is what it looks like. That's the consistency. So it's sticky on my hand, it's thick, but it's smooth. I don't need to hear any comments about me licking my fingers, okay? I'm in my own kitchen, everybody. My chocolate frosting is very thick and kind of doughy. How do we make it thinner? Add some more milk, whatever milk you're using. Looks like hamantash and dough. Um, my hamantash is a little bit different, but um, it is. I think it's a nice dough, I do. All right, let's 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 start to frost. I'm gonna get one more piece of parchment. Actually, I'm not, these are clean, I'm just gonna grab one of these. I like to work on top of parchment, this way I can make a mess and it's no big deal. This is gonna get messy, it is. It's gonna be messy. It's gonna be fine, but I'm just warning you. All right, now I'm gonna move my frostings out of the way and I'm gonna put it so you guys can see what my hands are doing. I will, I will, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Oh, thank you, Deb. That's so nice. My hamantaschen recipe is not mine. I have to give credit where it is due. And that is to Rachel Corrigan and her mom, Susan, who taught me how to make hamantaschen when I lived in D.C. And my favorite part about this is that Susan was a nice Catholic girl who grew up in the Midwest, met a nice Jewish boy at a law school party, converted, got married, had a beautiful Jewish daughter. And it's her hamantaschen recipe that was inspired by her Betty Crocker cookbook that I made. And I just love the recipe and I love Susan and her daughter Rachel. So inspiration can come from anywhere and the best Jewish cookie can come from a nice Catholic girl in Ohio. Um, okay, my consistency are, are peanut butter cookies. I don't know what that means, like peanut butter kiss cookies. It's been a while since I've made those, so I'm not sure, I'm not totally sure um, if I can help. So I'm going to grab, uh oh, I'm going to grab my offset spatula, which is underneath a bunch of crap. Okay. So you can see I have my cookie, which is pretty round, not too bad. And I'm placing my flat edge right here down the middle. And I'm going to take some of my white vanilla frosting. See, I'm already making a mess. And I'm going to start spreading it. Now, I just watched a video on Instagram that my colleague Molly sent to me of uh, black and white cookies being made by dipping them right in and it was mesmerizing. And that would be even more of a mess. So I want to gently, and if you don't have a spatula to do this, you can use a butter knife, you can use a spoon, you can use whatever is working for you. I wanna spread it as smoothly and evenly as I can. It is gonna drip maybe a little bit. And then when I'm ready, I'm gonna pull it up and there I have a perfectly even edge. Now I can see that maybe it's not exactly down the middle. Maybe I don't like that. Maybe I want to add a little bit more vanilla. Try and make it a little bit evener. Evener, more even. And I'll try to speak English while I'm at it. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit more frosting and just spread it a little bit over. But that's why we're using this flat edge here. So we can try and make our black and whites as even as possible. Make Jerry Seinfeld proud. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna start doing a bunch of, of vanilla and let them set and then start doing the chocolate. Okay, let's see. Oh, thanks Becky for sharing the hamantash and recipe. So you spread the icing on the bottom flat side. Yes, yes. You're spreading it on the flat side, not the round side. I mean, you could do it on the round side, but it will fall off, it will not be as perfect. So this is the flat side, it's very nice and smooth. It bakes really evenly. 
and I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna just keep spreading them on. I made a batch of these last week and my daughter took one almost every day as her, uh, as her junky snack for school. I let them take one healthy snack and one junky snack and she chose the black and white one. So I was very happy that she liked that. All right, I will continue answering questions. I have the chat up so I can um, see your questions hopefully in real time and help answer them. You see, I'm just, you could also use like um, a wooden skewer to help even them out a little bit if you were concerned. All right. That's not, I mean, okay, what I mean by a junky snack is, you know, like one healthy thing, like a fruit, like or a vegetable, like cucumbers or apple slices, that's like the healthy snack. And then like a junky snack would be like a bag of Doritos or a black and white cookie, you know. We try, I try to distinguish for my kids between foods that your body needs and foods that our taste buds like. I'm trying. It's hard. There's so much junk food around. Okay. Um, no, 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 I, I, I just waited a few minutes. Um, I don't store them in the refrigerator, great, great questions. I don't, I store them at room temperature out in like a container on my, on my, um, on my counter. They, they don't need to be um, refrigerated. I mean, you could, but um, I don't, and they're totally fine. But you do wanna wait until the frosting is completely set, because it is a little bit sticky. This is hard to do, hold on a second. I just messed this up, so I'm gonna scooch it over a little bit. All right, there we go. I don't have a straight edge, so I use aluminum foil. Great, perfect, Linda. That's so, you know, you can really use anything. And the truth is, if, if you're the kind of person, you might have the precision naturally, and you don't need a flat, a flat edge. I have friends who are bakers who are like that, or who are artists. Great, fantastic on you. I am not at all. So I need a flat edge to do this the right way. I did not let these cool for like an hour. I didn't make these earlier in the day. I let them sit on a wire rack and as they are, as I could handle them, handle them, I mean, they're not burning my hands, I'm starting to cross them. I mean, ideally you might let them wait a little bit longer, but they're totally fine. If you're concerned at all and you wanna pop them in the fridge for a little bit to cool them down, that's fine too. Um, but they're fine, and you can see, I'll show you under the camera, it's not running down, and that's because of the corn syrup. See, it's not running down the sides. It's perfectly set. You're going to see very quickly, the same way that the frosting started to harden a little bit in your bowl, um, it, it will start to harden right on your cookies as well. Okay. Um, if my frosting is looking kind of transparent or, or sticky, then how do I just put more frosting. It might mean um, that you might need to add a little bit of confection sugar. If it seems too translucent or it's running too much, um, then I would maybe try to add a little bit of confection sugar, just maybe a couple of teaspoons and see if that helps thicken it up a little bit. Um, size of scoop for the cookies, again, please. I should measure this. Um, let me see if I have my ruler in there. Oh, I know what I think my All right, the cookie scoop. Let's do an exact measure if I can if I can handle it. This is a silicone baking mat. It's one of my favorite tools. Um, I use it for rolling out challah, um, but it's great for things like pies because look at what it has on the other side. All these measurements, and you can roll it out like this. Um, so let me find my cookie scoop. And then I'll tell you the, the, the approximate inch, inches, inchage. So it looks like it's about one and a half inches. That's what it looks like. It's, it's smaller than my palm. But you could make the cookies bigger than that. It's fine if you make them bigger. They're just gonna bake a little bit longer. So if, the, if their cookies were baking 15 minutes before, just check on them and maybe add another minute if you're making bigger ones. You could also use a quarter cup, like a quarter measuring cup. Use that to scoop. Somebody said they were using an ice cream scoop. That's a great idea as well. Okay. Um, I can, okay. All right, I will do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, it's, the size is less important 
and I'm not making any sexual jokes here. The size is less important than the function, okay? Let that be a life lesson for many things. Uh, it's more important that you're scooping it and that they're all even than, than the size. You're just gonna watch the baking time. Um, okay, let's see. All right, so now that the vanilla, I, I totally forgot uh, what I was doing. So let's go back. I start talking about size and I become like a middle school boy. All right, so my vanilla frosting has set and I'm gonna go back now and work on my, on my chocolate. Now I haven't frosted all of them. I'm not that fast. Many of them are just sitting here waiting to be frosted. I will do that later. So you guys don't have to sit and watch me um, frost all the cookies or make bad sexual jokes while we're sitting here. So here we have my frosted one and now I'm gonna start to do my uh, my chocolate frosting. And I'm gonna use a butter knife for this so I can try and be precise. All right. So I can see my chocolate frosting is a little bit on the thicker side, but that's actually very traditional with a half moon cookie is that the chocolate frosting ends up being a little bit thicker than the vanilla. So we're just, we're very traditional tonight, making not really black and whites, more accurately, half moons. All right, here we go. Can you move, move the cookie a little bit more? Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm so, uh, I was so engrossed in what I was doing. All right, here we go. So I'm just delicately. So this is really the most time consuming part of this, right? Is because I'm really taking my time to frost them because I want them to look as perfect as possible. And you know what? Even if they don't look as perfect as possible, they're still going to be so delicious. And this is the kind of task that when you make homemade black and white cookies, I mean, not that this should be the reason that you do it, but you know, it's pretty impressive. You're like, look, I made these black and white cookies. People are going to, people are going to be super impressed. Look at that. A true New Yorkish cookie. See, Lonnie, exactly. I, what did I say before? I was so intimidated the first time I, I, I had made this. I didn't, I was like, oh my God, I can't do this. This is, this is so hard. It's actually not the hard. You're just making cake batter. You're scooping it, no matter what the size of your cookie scoop, the size doesn't matter. And then you're frosting it with a really simple frosting. Um, have you used a piping bag to outline the chocolate vanilla? I have not, but that is actually a great idea. And my friend Miriam, Who's always using a piping bag for everything, including making stuffed shells? She would probably be saying, "Shani, she's using a piping bag right now." But um, so that's a great idea. You could you could certainly try that. But I'm I'm but I'm not going to. I'm just going to use some butter. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to keep keep frosting away, and I'm happy to answer any other questions while I'm at it. I'd love to just make a plug to let you know that we're going to be doing this monthly cook along, bake along every month. The next couple months. So, if there are things that you want to be making, please feel free to shoot us an email. You can email info at thenosher.com or put it in the chat. If there's things that you really want to be making, we are going to be doing a week of of Passover cooking classes with some guest chefs, including um, Jake Cohen. If you're a Jake Cohen fan on Instagram, um, an Israeli baker named Lior Mashiach, who is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite bakers. She's so talented. Um, Sonia Sanford out in um, Portland is going to be doing some fun little kugel cups with us. So we have some other really fun um, cooking stuff coming up and I would love for you to join us for that. Um, okay, let's see, other questions. Oh, so many questions. No, nope, we're done with questions now. No, I'm just joking. Um, where can we get videos of past classes? This is it. This is the first one. You're here for the first one. The, now you're on the list, whether you want to be or not. So you'll be getting, uh, you'll be getting emails. Um, and they'll be great. You will love the emails. I love the emails too. Um, storage, you put them in the fridge. Rachel Hillman, you don't get questions because you're texting me right now. So I'll answer your questions afterwards. No, the answer is, um, you don't have to store them in the fridge. You can store them at room temperature in a container. Um, but make sure you let them, let the icing set completely before you cover them up because um, they, they can be a little bit sticky, a little bit tacky, and you don't want, um, you don't want to crush the, the frosting. Um, if we want to share, oh, what a great question, Alan. Thank you, Alan and Amy. Um, 
I would love for you to share your cookies, please. We have a Facebook group called The Nosher Coping and Baking. Come join our Facebook group and share the photos in there. Or on Instagram, you can tag um, at Jewish food is our account or tag hashtag nosh this. Oh, and look at those cookies. Okay, I'm gonna change the view so I can see what you guys are doing and I'm gonna take a picture also. So if you have been making, um, I'm gonna take this off. If you have been making black and whites, I would love to see them. Can you show them up in your screen so I can take a picture of them? A, a lot of you do not look like you're baking, which is totally fine. I just didn't say everybody had to. Oh, look at that, Robin, that looks so nice. Oh, look at those. Hi, Rebecca. Oh, they look so nice. Yay, oh, that's awesome. This is my favorite part. So great question. Thank you for asking about tagging. Please, um, please share them with us on Instagram, on Facebook. We'd love to see them. You can email them to me as well. And I'll try to share a bunch of them over the next, um, over the next day. I'll try to share some of them on social media. Um, okay, let's see. What time is it? Um, knishes. Oh, that's a great one. Yes, let's do knishes. I love making knishes from scratch. They're so fun. Can you flatten the dome? Ellen asks. Yes, you can flatten them a little bit. In that step where I took the water and I was like smoothing it out, you can flatten them a little bit. It does make it a little easier to frost them when you're turning them over. So um, I, I, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't like smush them down, <laughs> but you can pat them down gently, right? Like I said, like you're, you're patting them like a little, a little cute baby tush. Um, okay, looks like we're, we're sending the recipe. Marilyn wants the recipe. Um, we will put that in the chat. The Instagram account is Jewish Food. The Facebook group is The Nosher Cooking and Baking. Ask to join, I will let you in as long as you're nice. Um, oh, okay, sure. Hi, Akir, he is 11 and you love to bake and I'm so glad you joined for us. We have some other fun stuff that's geared for kids too. So maybe we can find some good stuff for you. You wanna ship them. Um, Debbie is asking just for me to ship them. I would just make sure, um, I think these would actually ship very well because they actually have a little bit, they, they last for a couple of days. So just make sure that the icing has totally set before you would store them in anything and then ship them. I, but I would do like two day shipping. I wouldn't do it like a week. Like two day shipping would be totally fine. Um, yes, we will be sending out for the last time the, the, um, the recording of this so you guys can watch it. Again, I'll remind you that if you go to our Instagram page, which is Jewish Food, you can see a video reel of this, or you can go to our site, thenosher.com, under videos right at the top. You can find the video of this as well, or if you clicked on the recipe for this, it should be right at the top. You can see, you can watch the video. It's me making them, so it's, this, it's the same recipe. Okay. Um, thank you guys so much for joining our first monthly cook along, bake along, black and white cookies. And I will look forward to seeing your photos and hoping to see you guys next month. We'll be doing Hauntashin.